Now yeah, let's take it out for a drive. Short, short drive around the block. Oh, seat belts. Got the top up. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna, uh, I'll talk a little bit about this stereo and how I installed it. I take it around the block, move the fluids a little. I just don't have time to drive this thing. I'm always getting stuff for my wife. Get this here. No fluids leaking anywhere. It's always a good thing. Power steering, yes. Yeah. I just, uh, here's the old guy that's been watering his lawn for years with a garden hose. Fix the sprinklers, it's so much easier. A little breezy today. Can't believe it's like what August, uh, maybe August 18th, 19th. Here in Southern California, it's usually 90 to 100 degrees, but we've had cool weather for the last three or four, three days. It's like 80 degrees out. That's crazy. Feels good. Feels really good. Yeah, so this stereo, I've got to, uh, I got to pull it out because, um, it's an old stereo. I think it came off my toolbox, that big old toolbox that I have, $1,800 toolbox. Came with a refrigerator and a, a stereo. And uh, I don't need that. <laughs> I already got a stereo in the garage. So I put that unit, it's a Pioneer. Uh, I think it has a CD player in it. But it has a uh, iPod connection, which eight years ago was like, oh, wow, well, I can hook that up. And then it also has an auxiliary jack, the black wire. And... Um,
what I want to do is uh, I've got all the music on my phone. You know, I've got Spotify and Amazon Music. And being it's not a Bluetooth unit, I just want to be able to plug it in. But that quarter jack, or that uh, eight eighth inch jack, only gets one side of the stereo. And I know the phone connection and everything is okay because it works in uh, the Lincoln and it works in the Kia, which is fine. So I got to pull this thing out and replace that uh, cable, the black cable auxiliary one. Let's see, where are we? Holy crap, is it bright? Oh, it's green. Good. So I'm going to pull it out and probably just replace the cable. I think I got one laying around. See why it's not working. Now when I first got this SL, the radio didn't work. And uh, I kept blowing fuses. I think it was either fuse six or nine, I forget. So I said, screw this. I'm gonna put another radio stereo in it. And what I should have done is I should have just sent the original, I think it's a, uh, God, is it a Grand Prix? Grand Prix, it's the, was the original system. Um, I should have sent it out to, there's a place, I think it's in Boston, that'll take it and fix it and uh, they'll uh, install auxiliary cable or whatever, you know, they'll update it, it'll look original. Because it is a pain in the butt putting a new system in this car. It's because uh, I couldn't find any schematics for the wiring, so I had to figure out the wiring myself. And there's a lot of people that are always asking questions uh, on forums, you know. Does anybody have a schematic? It's like, nobody's got a schematic. I think maybe the only way you could get one is if you you pay for that star system, whatever the Mercedes uh, system is, has everything in it. But I thought I'd show you my old, old unit. Um, so it's a Becker Grand Prix right there and it's had a burn-in check <laughs> um, this is I guess a, yeah this goes over over here um, this is the back of it here um, this right here is a uh, chassis ground for the anti-theft This part, I'm not sure what it is. And then, so you have this, um, just the stock stereo cassette player. Now these can be upgraded if you send them out to, there's a place if you search on the internet. I think it's in Boston, forget the name. 
but it was on Ben's World. You search for it there. Um, and a lot of people, they want to keep these orig original as possible, you know. So they'll have this uh, reconditioned. Um, that's probably what I should have done. I think it's about $300, $350 to have one of these uh, reconditioned with, um, I think they put some kind of uh, either outputs or inputs into it. I forget. But it'd be easier because then you can just plug and play, you know. But I just, <laughs> I was in a hurry. And so I just said, I'm going to replace it with a, more, a little more modern unit. Now this right here is the, this is the radio head right here. This is what's in the trunk on the uh, driver's side behind the carpeting. And it's got all kinds of fun stuff on it too. What is it? It's uh, so in the radio head, and then this is the head unit. Two times 25 watt. That's not very strong. Uh, if I remember right, these right here are the, these are the speaker wires for the dashboard for the tweeters. So it's for uh, two, it's got two and got one, two. 25 watts, so they're not, it's not super strong, so it doesn't blow out the tweeters in the dashboards. And then it's got other little power connections, I think a fuse. Um, I don't know a lot of this stuff here. I think that's for some kind of phone related things. They had so many different combinations in these cars of what people ordered, you know. So, um, yeah, there's no way of really testing the, what these plugs, what they do. Um, and then you've got your antenna input right here, which is in the trunk right, right there. That plugs into this. This is located right there. So I'm thinking um, this might also amplify the antenna signal because when I put this uh, Pioneer stereo in, I was going, well, how, how am I going to get an antenna to it? Where's the antenna wire there inside the dashboard? There is no antenna wire. Antenna wire is like 12 inches long, you know, from here to here, from here to that thing. So what I did is I, uh, I bought a 10 foot piece of, uh, antenna cable and plugged the antenna into it and then snaked it, snaked it through the, um, interior, um, th under the console and then up into the dash. So I could plug it in. But the reception is crappy. You know, compared to my other cars. That gets really good reception. This one gets pretty good reception at Lincoln. I'm, I'm in a valley here, so, you know, um, Los Angeles stations are kind of, eh. Depends how high you are on one of these hills. But anyway, so... I, um, yeah, I think that they, uh, being in the antenna was in the very back of the car instead of usually, you know, they're close. I had to put that cable in there. Um, so that's that part of it. And then, yeah, and then these, these wires here, they, uh, they go from here all the way through to the tweeters. It's just a straight run to the, to this uh, radio head. So I think that's about that. that. I thought I'd bring this out. This is a, uh, 
the HVAC uh, control module. This is the one that came out of my car. Original works, but starts fan speed at number three. Uh, 20, let's see, uh, 2014 is when I took it out. Um, I had a friend who had a 92 500SL and he decided he was going to make a dragster out of it. And he lightened it by a thousand pounds. And so he had all these extra parts and called me and said, Hey, I've got all these parts at my mom's house and she wants me to get rid of them or they're going in the trash. Do you want them? I go, yeah, I'll just bring them all up here. I didn't want to drive down to Orange County. So he drove them up here and left all this stuff. And um, so I took his and put it in here because this one here, um, you'll see a lot, a lot of posts on, on Ben's World, a few posts where you get in the car, you start it up, and this thing is on high. It's like on high speed. It starts off, and so you got to, you know, shut it off. And I thought that was normal when I got the car, but it's not normal. It's uh, there's something wrong with this unit as far as when it gets power, it just decides to go into full blast mode. So eh, it's one of those things. Anyways, I thought I'd bring that up. Um, so in the trunk, I put a, uh, I think it's a 300 watt amplifier. And then I wanted to get something skinny that would fit down in this little corner. Um, these leads are, they go to a bass speaker that's right in inside here that I installed in the storage unit. As far as power for this, it's, I ran it under all along here. It's a four gauge wire, this red wire. It's got a heavy duty fuse on it tapped into the, to the positive. Um, as far as the negative, I don't know. I, this might, uh, all the power connections are at the bottom. I think of the negative, I found a ground spot somewhere. Um, and then I used um, the existing hole here. I made a bracket. Um, so I didn't have to drill or anything. All the wires for the for the speakers and everything, uh, an antenna. I just ran it over on this side. Once you take all of this off, you can snake a piece of thin wire through under here, away from all the soft top mechanisms. And it'll go straight through to the back or, or to the inside. I forgot I should have showed, uh, showed you this. This is that original uh, Becker unit. Like uh, this, there's the front of it. This is where you push when you stick your tool in there that holds it in to the, da to the dashboard, that opening. So that's what's holding it right here. Same on the other side. So they're both at the bottom. That's where you should uh, put your tool in. All right. This is the speaker right here. Um, this whole storage unit, it's not the original one. This was my buddy uh, brought that one of those over from his 92, which is the exact same one, but it was real nasty beige or whatever, real dirty. So I stripped it, then recovered it. And I fast and I cut hole in the one of these doors mounted the speaker in there. I even, I think I put some baffles. Ouch, God. Yeah, I've got uh, just one baffle hole that I cut in it right here. Uh, looking at audio forums and stuff and or just setups. They recommend putting a, uh, a hole right there to, I don't know what it does. It makes the bass sound a little better. Relieves the rattling, who knows. And then I just got the stereo unit in here. Um, as 
far as you have a base right here and a mid range right here, and your tweeters right there. It's kind of dark in here. Um, and right under the foot well right here, if you take the carpeting out, there's a uh, there's a base amp, a factory base amp. And um, I don't know if it was working or not because the whole unit, the original unit was blowing a fuse every time uh, I would turn it on. So it was either the original head unit or or the base amp. I never, te I should have tested to see if which one was bad, but I didn't. Um, and so you have your base amp here. Um, and then it's got the connections for the base speakers for both both doors end up right here. Okay, so um, I'm trying to remember. I think I, uh, since I already have a big base speaker back there, I took these, the wires here for the, for the two door speakers and uh, put an extension on there and just ran it up to this unit here that had had wires for the for uh, inputs or outputs for the base, so I connected it right there. Um, the mid range, I forget where the mid range uh, wires went. I'm trying to remember if they were located in the trunk at that radio head. I don't think they were. I think the mid range might go directly to behind here um one the way that i figured out the wires and the colors and everything on what was what is i took a uh, a sony uh, boom box that my wife's mother had that we inherited when she passed away <laughs> and it had a headphone jack and so i plugged in a headphone um i think it was it the one eighth jack I plugged that in, I cut the line, I stripped the wire, and then it had kind of a long wire on it, and I would go to these uh, areas like in the trunk. I didn't know what those two speaker wires were for, and so you'd touch the, you'd turn on the, the boom box really loud with the headphone jack, and you take the wires and touch it. The speaker wire's back there, and it'll identify which one and it identified it was these right here I go oh okay so I do my schematic you know and first I do a schematic on the original setup and then I do a schematic for the new radio stereo system and see all the wires that did it all the you know, inputs and outputs that it requires, and then just matched everything up, and it, it works. But yeah, it's a drag. It's good luck trying to find a schematic for these things. Um, but if you, uh, you know, you want to put in a new, a new head unit, nothing crazy, just, you just want to kind of keep, you know, if, if I, if it was me, I would keep it all original. You know, have your unit repair that way you don't have to deal with all this wiring crap but you don't want to do that you just uh you don't feel like taking all these doors apart your speakers uh, are okay these are fine they didn't get used a whole lot and they sound pretty sound okay um you know it's um it's good to just tap into the existing wiring i know you i'm sure if you take this to a stereo ins installation place they're gonna go screw this they're gonna run new wires everywhere put brand new speakers in everywhere and they're gonna take all this stuff apart and let me tell you this is old mercedes plastic parts and that stuff breaks so there's gonna be some kind of damage it might not be but you know it just seems like every time i take something apart on this car the plastic parts start kind of breaking on you know it's just part of the deal with 90s early 90s mercedes uh, what else so i have a base control right here 
that comes from that amplifier and I can bring up the bass manually if I want, you know, strong, stronger. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of cool because there's some songs that are just, I go, oh, I want more bass in that, you know, leveling on some of these things. I use, a, um, first I used iPod because this thing had an iPod connection and that worked pretty good for a while. Now I want to be able to use my iPhone where I have Spotify and Amazon Music on there, playlists, stuff like that. And so uh, I have to uh, figure out why this one's only getting the right side of the speakers. Well, this thing gets both sides of the speakers. And I think it's just, I think it's just the cable. So I gotta pull it out. Thought I'd show you what, uh... How I put that speaker in for the bass. This was the donated part. I didn't want to cut up my original one. So it kind of came in handy. They gave me this nasty looking thing. Um, I said, oh good, I can butcher it. <laughs> so I I eventually took it and uh, just stripped it. And um, I think I made a template for some plywood so I could uh, do, I don't know, I've, it's been a while, but um, yeah, I kind of made my own door and then just started fast making a speaker in there. And I wanted it strong enough so if the cat walks on it or something like that, it doesn't puncture it. Made a really nasty grill, but it came out all right. That was from my mom's uh, patio table. I just, it's from the 60s. Sorry, mom. I just went out there and just cut, <laughs> cut a piece, but it's really strong. You could stand on this thing. Um, and it took me a couple, couple weeks of making that thing up, but it, uh, you know, it eventually came out, came out fairly okay, you know, um, and nobody, you know, nobody's go back there. I mean, I just put the speaker back there like that. It kind of looks like a toilet seat, but who's going to look? You know, and I did manage to uh, get this material that really mat matches really super close to the original color of the, uh, the interior. Went to Joanne's Fabrics, it was $20. $20 and some glue and some staples and, you know, and I, that's the bottom of the speaker. Um, yeah, I took pictures on everything that I did. There's that uh, four gauge. That's what I recommended for the amp. I guess it draws a lot of power, huh? Yeah, then I, uh, there were already some screw holes on this part of the car. So I just, uh, I used the original, the, you know, the screw holes there to mount this little volume control. It worked out pretty good. You know, uh, what else? So I think I got a schematic. Let's see. So this is what, this is what the pinout looks like on the, uh, the footwell amp. These right here are, uh, speaker wires for the door. So you got a blue up here and there's blue there. Same, uh, I think on this side here. Um, wow. Left front speaker. So this is, this is the pin out. that right there okay um, what else do I have here um, as you can tell it's kind of a mess but good lord oh this is the new uh, this is the new unit that I had the iPod this is the Pioneer unit. 
And, and this was the schematic that they gave me with it. So that the blue wire there behind the, uh, in the dash is, um, I think this is uh, what triggers the uh, antenna to go up when you turn the unit on. <laughs> what do I do with these? Well, so we got uh, illumination is the gray violet. I guess this is the power for the head unit. So I was trying to match up what, what, what was on the old system to the new system. A nightmare. That's the trunk. That's that, uh, that's that head unit in the trunk, whatever you want to call it. There's that blue wire for the antenna and it goes all the way, so, you know, so I auto antenna. Um, not sure what this does. This is the, those kind of white telephone. Who knows what? Not sure what this one did. That's the radio. Power for the trunk radio in the trunk. Another eight pin connector. Speaker wires may be for mid range. At this point, I wasn't sure what those were but I believe they're uh, for the tweeters. Just it's the same wires. I downloaded a bunch of uh, wiring diagrams, but you know, this is for like 1991, but I don't know what kind of car it was. It wasn't for my car. But they were similar systems, you know, and they're pretty complicated. It's a Grand Prix radio with the, the power, the ground. It's always brown. Brown is usually always ground on these antenna trigger right there. Anti-theft is this right here where somebody st steals the radio takes it out the radio locks itself unless you have a code which you get from a dealer anti-theft there's that eight pin connection again somebody knows let me know what it was but i think it's for uh this was the uh the fuse fuse c i believe uh nine this is what kept blowing up whenever I turned the original system on. Yeah, I'll see. Uh, door lights sound system. Yeah, my door lights didn't work either. I, that was a whole nother fix I had to. I had to work on those. That was an interesting fix. Um, what else, anything else on here? I just had this big sheet of paper and I just started drawing, I started at one point, you know, and st just started drawing all this kind of stuff, you know. What did I find in the trunk? This is what's in the trunk. And I just started labeling the wires and then slowly but surely figured out what what everything was you know i mean insanity anyways this is what i had to go through this is all the wiring that came with uh 
Now, I think I had to buy this to install the uh, the amplifier. There's that wire. You can buy this online. eBay. I think I got it on eBay, but it came with all this different stuff. It came in pretty handy. Um, one thing about uh, that existing old system, I was reading, I read so much stuff on these Mercedes stereos for these SLs, and the original unit had some kind of a sensing thing where it knew that if you had the top down, it would send a signal to the stereo and it would boost the volume just up a little bit. Because when you take and when you put it in convertible mode, all the sound in the car goes, it basically just goes outside, goes out the window. <laughs> it's just, a, you know, you can't hear it real good. You know, when you have the top on, cl windows closed, you hear it real good, you open the top and boom, and, your sound just disappears. It's just real faint, you know? So that's why I put an amp in there. I think when I first installed it, I just installed this, the, the, the stereo without an amp and I could barely, uh, yeah, it was just sounded like crap. So I'm in the car now and I figured out it is a bad, this, this cable is bad. It's weird how it goes, goes bad, it just goes bad on you. So I got another cable that I tried and it works. And I'm just gonna tape this here and then from the back, pull it through. Um, and then I'll be able to use uh, this, uh, this uh, it's an iPhone 5 that of mine, but it has, uh, it has like all these, playlists uh, this it's not active it doesn't um, you know get the wireless signal make phone calls and stuff so I just use it as a player I uh, turn the Wi-Fi on when I'm at home if I want and um, download make a big playlist like I think this playlist has a thousand songs on it um, I basically have nothing on this on this phone but just music and it's cool I mean I can just uh, plug the uh, plug it in fast forward all that stuff like that the heck is that noise anyways um, hopefully I'm gonna get taken down for copyrights all right so uh, so I'm good just got an auxiliary one. Perfect. And I just leave this here and that's a thousand songs right there. Cool. Yeah. Stereo working. Sounds great with that bass in. Yeah, you gotta get one. All working. I'm for an evening cruise to go out and get some some Coors, Coors Light. Sounds great. Not as fast as modern SLs, but it sure sounds great when it's doing it. Yeah. Anyways, I got both sides of the stereo to work. My job is done for the day. Goodbye.